It's story time. It's story time. Jordan. Yeah, story time. Yeah. It's not story time. It's survey time. Welcome to the This Week in Linux version of the Linux Tech Survey. Alright, I'm making this as sort of a video response to the Linux whiz kid and to OzGUI, but the original survey started with no more comp, a guy named Wakar. Alright, question one. When was the first time you ever heard of Linux? Um, for me, it was back in 2001. I was in college and I had a roommate who was let's just say he wasn't big on legal operating systems so he came to me with Slackware, Slackware Linux and said dude you've gotta try this out it's friggin awesome so I put it on my desktop and it was really neat but at the time I, I knew very little about it so basically if it couldn't browse the web or if it couldn't check my email I didn't care and it could do those things it just did them in a really funky way alright question two do you or have you ever used Linux if yes for how long well I guess I just established, yes, I have used it. Uh, I started back in 2001 with Slackware. I tried a bunch of different distros between now and then. Uh, as far as full-time usage, February of 2007 is when I actually made the plunge. I started using Ubuntu full-time then, uh, and I've gone back and forth with distros since then. Question three, what was the first Linux distro you used? Yeah, we're getting repetitive. First one was Slackware Linux. Question four, how was your first time Linux experience? Like I just said, it was it was decent, it wasn't flooring, and I knew nothing about package management at the time, so you know, it was fun and it was something to play with. Question 5. Do you agree that Linux can efficiently do all the daily computing tests an average computer user would do? Yes. Uh, actually, after talking to one of the guys in my IRC channel last night, yes, I am convinced that with enough effort, it can do anything an average, average user wants to do. It can do anything an advanced user wants to do. If you're willing to put in the time and effort to make it work, Yes, it will do anything you want it to do. Uh, question six. What's your favorite GNOME Linux distro and why? That's actually a bit of a toss-up at the moment. Uh, my favorite is probably Fedora because that's what I use on everything and for the most part it's pretty simple once you get past all the everything has to be free software. Uh, my longtime favorite has been Ubuntu but with the latest version with 9.10 I had a lot of uh, I, I had a lot of bad issues to deal with. Alright, seven, what's your favorite KDE Linux distro and why? I really dislike KDE. The newer versions, the 4.2, 4.3, I haven't seen 4.4 yet, the newer versions of KDE look pretty nice. It, it just feels too much like Windows for me. I know there's going to be a lot of KDE lovers out there that's going to hate me for saying that, but I just don't care for it. It's really complicated to do anything, and my first long-term experiences were with GNOME, so it's always going to be a favorite for me. I've also tried XFCE and Fluxbox and Openbox and a bunch of different window managers and, and desktop environments. And while a lot of them are very nice, like XFCE is great, and Fluxbox I was actually on for a couple of weeks or maybe even a month, but I just keep coming back to GNOME. All right, number eight. What, is, what Linux desktop environment do you like? Uh, I guess I should have more thoroughly read the questions before I started answering. What Linux desktop environment do you like? I like GNOME and I like uh, XFCE a little bit. I've actually used LXDE before and it's really simple and, and fast and clean too. Number nine, Linux is a pro, B, noob, or C both. Uh, C both definitely. You can be as big a noob as you want to be and still come in and use an entry level distro like Ubuntu and have it work just fine out of the box. On the same token, you can be as pro as you want to be really all these people that are Linux pros, the the RTFM type people, and yes I'm gonna keep using air quotes, they're giving a terrible stereotype to the Linux community. There are so many people that I've talked to that say, you know, I was terrified to come to Linux in the beginning because so many people just pushed me away. They told me, you know, go read the manual or or go spend hours and hours on the web searching for this and then come back and talk to us. And that's just a horrible way to treat your community. Linux is all about community. You know, you've got to embrace your people, noob or not, you've got to embrace them and bring them in and show them the wonderful things of the operating system. It's not a religion, it's an operating system. Anyway, ranting over there. Number 10, what are some of the things that Linux gives you that other OSs don't? Freedom. Yes, a lot of people think that Windows is free because when you buy a new computer, most of the time it comes on there, but being able to just wipe it all out and start from scratch and not have to call somebody and say, Yes, I need to reactivate the license. That's freedom to me. Being able to install a whole variety of software without having to do it illegally, 
that's freedom. Being able to take the software that you have and look at the source code and say, you know, I don't like the way this looks, I don't like the way this acts, and change it. That's freedom. Number 11, what is are some of your favorite Linux applications? Biggest one for me right now is Caden Live. As you see with all this, I, I've been making videos for a couple of months now, and Caden Live has been a lifesaver. Audacity is another big one because the audio that I normally capture comes from a USB mic, and I have to sync it up, so I have to get high quality audio out of a Linux application, and that's one of the best. Uh, number 12, what are some of the things you would like to see improved in Linux? That's actually a really good question. Um, well, as I've mentioned before, in this latest version of Ubuntu, a lot of the hardware abstraction layer type things were broken, so I would love to see that fixed. And Fedora appears to have some similar issues, but nowhere near on the scale of what, what Ubuntu has. Uh, some other things I'd like to see improved, I'd like to see a lot more application compatibility. I'd like to see a lot more of the Windows applications and the Mac applications being ported over, but that's not anything that Linux itself can improve. It's something that the designers have to actually do. And number 13, if those things are fixed, would you switch to Linux, assuming you don't already use Linux as your primary OS? If I weren't using Linux as my primary OS, I would not have this show. I would not have all of you wonderful subscribers watching me, and I would probably be a very sad, lonely person. I already kind of am. Anyway, as usual, that's all for this week in Linux. Thanks for watching my copy of the Linux Tech Survey. Thanks to uh, Wakar, to uh, No More Comp on YouTube for, for actually creating this survey. That's all for this week in Linux. See you next time.